Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I am going to show you a very interesting video which is basically on exploding gradient problem. We will try to understand why and how does an exploding gradient problem occur. In my previous video I have already discussed about vanishing gradient problem. If you have not seen that, please I would suggest before going to this particular video you have a look on to that. So let us take a very ex good example to understand what exactly is exploding gradient problem. Here I am basically taking a two hidden layer, a three hidden layer neural network. So this is my two hidden layers. And this is basically my output layer. So my input features are basically getting passed to this. The first weight that I have basically assigned is W11 to the suffix 1. Then here you know the summation of weights and the uh, input features happen and then an activation function like sigmoid gets applied. After the activation function is getting applied, I am passing, I am assigning to, uh, I am assigning another weight which is like W21 to the next uh, neuron which is in the next hidden layer. Let me just say that this O11 that I am trying to provide the input because this O11 gets multiplied with OW21 uh, to make it simple I am just writing it as Z okay. Now this particular value I am passing over here same operation happens and similarly we will be getting the value in the output layer. And after I get my output that is basically my Y hat. Now when I have Y hat what I do in the next step I just pass it to a loss function. Now as you know that if I am passing it to a loss function that basically means I have to reduce that loss value. And for that I'm basically using optimizer. Now how does an optimizer reduces the loss function is basically by updating the weights in the back propagation. So each and every weights gets updated unless and until this loss value gets reduced. And when the loss value gets reduced you will be seeing that y hat and y which is your actual data will be looking similar. You know they will be having the same equal value. So let us just try to understand how does the weight updation happen. As I have already discussed in the previous class also, suppose if I want to update W11 to the suffix 1, so I can write a weight updation formula which is there in this right hand side. I can write it as W11 new is equal to W11 old minus learning rate multiplied by derivative of L, right? And with respect to the weights. Now a very important thing, when does this exploding gradient problem happen? It basically happens in this particular problem statement. Now when I am calculating derivative of loss with respect to W11, now by using the chain rule, by using the chain rule, I can write this. How I am writing it? Now see this. My output O31 is dependent on O21. O21 is getting impacted by O11 and O11 is getting impacted by W11. Now if I want to find out the derivative of this, I basically need to find the derivative of all these values. And for that, I'll be using a simple chain rule. My chain rule will be derivative of loss with respect to derivative of weight is equal to derivative of O31 derivative of O31 divided by derivative of O21 then O21 is getting impacted by this so I can multiply this derivative of O21 divided by derivative of O11 and finally derivative of O11 divided by derivative of W11. Now this is basically a chain rule because see if I cancel all these things this will be derivative of O31 divided by derivative of W11 right. So this is basically a chain rule okay. Now as I said that let me just consider this particular derivative because I need to show you how does an exploding gradient problem happen and it just it does not just happen because of sigmoid function okay the main reason this exploding gradient problem happens is because of weights okay it is because of weights now you may be confused how I'll just show you a very good example because you know that sigmoid you know whenever we apply a sigmoid activation function it transforms the values between 0 to 1. And the derivative of our sigmoid function is also between 0 to 0.25. You know that, right? So if you know this, a derivative of sigmoid, right? It ranges between 0 to 0.25. If I say derivative of sigmoid like this, okay? It ranges between 0 to 0.25, okay? So let us just take this value only and let, let's just try to compute this value. So here I'll write it as derivative of 0 to 1 derived by derivative of O11. Okay, I'm taking this. Let us solve this particular problem statement, this particular derivative only. Okay, now before solving this, you know that I'm giving the Z value over here because I have just renamed O11 as Z. Okay, so here you know that Z multiplied by what will happen? O, this Z basically is basically my uh, function which will get multiplied, which will multiply W21 and O11. So suppose I write over here as Z, Z is equal to nothing but W21 multiplied by O11 plus the bias 2 over here I have bias 1 over here I have bias 2 right so after this after this what this function does in the second step it applies an activation function so I am just writing this O21 in the form of the Z value okay I am considering 
the multiplication of W21 multiplied by O11 plus B2 as Z. Okay, because this is the operation that usually happens in this neural network, right? And then I'm basically applying an activation function. And this activation function is basically my sigmoid. Suppose I have sigmoid 1 divided by 1 e to the power of minus Z. This is the activation function that is getting applied. Now, imagine how can I write this derivative of O21 with respect to derivative of O11. That now you need to understand. I know that I'm giving the Z, everything is happening on the Z, right? Can I write like this? Derivative of activation function of Z divided by, just, 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 just focus on this, okay? Now, this will be derivative of Z because the Z, everything is happening on Z. And similarly, I can write with the help of chain rule derivative of Z divided by derivative of O11 because O11 is impacting that. So I'm basically using a simple chain rule I'm basically using a simple chain rule for O21 to calculate derivative of O21 with respect to derivative of O11. For that, I'm just saying that O21 is nothing but it is a function of activation function of Z. So I'm writing derivative of activation function of Z divided by derivative of Z multiplied by derivative of Z divided by derivative of O11. Again, this is a simple chain rule. This is a simple chain rule. Okay. Now, I know what is my derivative of Z. I mean, this activation function of Z, right? It, it, it. If I, if I just take this, if I just take this, let this particular situation be like this. I know that this is my sigmoid activation function because what is this activation function of Z? And I know that the sigmoid activation derivative will be ranging between 0 to 0 0.25. Yes, you know this. So let me just rub this again. Just focus over here because this is important to understand. I know that the derivative of activation function of Z will be ranging between 0 and 0.25. We know this because in sigmoid activation function, we know that it transforms the value between 0 to 1. And in my previous session also, I have discussed that derivative of this sigmoid function will always range between 0 to 0.25. Okay. Now, let me just consider over here, the value will be ranging between 0. Suppose if I take this, I, I'm just considering this as derivative because I don't have a little bit space over here. So, I'm just considering this derivative. So, this will be ranging between 0.25. Now, multiplied by, I'm multiplying by derivative of Z divided by derivative of O11. Let me substitute what is Z. Oh yeah, I know Z is this particular value. This is this particular value itself. And when I do derivative of O11, derivative of O11, if I apply the derivative, you see that O11 is also present over here and this is a constant. And if you know by simple rule of derivative, this all will get reduced to something called as W2, W21. Because O11 will get reduced. If you know derivative, this will become 1 and this will become 0. So I can write like this now. Now understand, for first scenario, suppose I have 0.25 over here. Now when will my derivative value will be higher? I told you the reason the derivative values becomes higher is because of weights. Now let us consider that my weight over here initialized is 500. Okay. Now if I initialize 500, if I multiply this, my value will be 125. Now when my value is 125, just imagine for this particular derivative, my value is 125. If I multiply this, suppose for this, I calculate it as 100. Considering my weights are higher. See guys, weights, whenever it is higher, then only it will perform this exploding gradient problem. Now for this particular derivative, my weights was very much higher and I got this particular value as 100. And here also I got it as 200 suppose. If I multiply this, it will be a larger value. Now, when it is a larger value, just consider this. I am trying to replace this with a larger value. Suppose my learning rate is 1. So, if I take the older value minus a larger value, now it may become a very small value that is like a negative number. And when it becomes a negative number, this and this will vary a lot. When it varies a lot, understand guys, the gradient descent will never converge. It will be jumping here and there. You know, after each and every back propagation of epochs, your weights will be varying a lot with respect to the older weights. And with due to that, you will never converge. You will never come to a point. You will never come to a global minima point. And that is where it is very, very important to understand how the weights are basically initialized. How the weights initialization should, should be done. Okay. Over here, you are just not using sigmoid guys. You may use anything, but if your weights are higher, what may happen? You may never converge to the global minima point. So 
In my upcoming videos, I'll also show you how awaits actually are getting initialized. Just understand, whenever we try to find out one derivative, if my weights are higher, I usually get a higher value of derivative, right? But you should know that my derivative of sigma is between 0 to 0 0.25. But because of weights, this derivative value is coming higher, larger. And when it becomes larger because of the chain rule, as I create a deep artificial neural network, this particular derivative with respect to W11 will become a very big number. And when it becomes a very big number, if I try to apply that in the weight updation formula, then what will happen? This Y old and Y new will be having, will be completely different. There'll be a huge gap between that. And because of that, what will happen after each and every path propagation, it will never reach the global minima point. So that is why this weight updation is very, very important. And this was all about exploding gradient problem. I hope you like this particular videos, guys. Make sure you subscribe the channel if you have not already subscribed. Please do let me know if you have any questions regarding in the by putting your comments in the comment box itself. Uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Uh, God bless you all. Have a great day ahead. Thank you.